We have a big spring. Where was I? Yep. We have the extractor tube, a big spring, then the extractor something else. I'll show you in a second. And then the extractor here. That's what's putting all the tension on this. We're about to remove that. There we go. Whoops, hit the camera again. Those are two different pieces. Feel free to do whatever, take them apart, clean them, whatever, but I'm gonna leave these together now because this gun's clean, never been shot, beyond test firing. Okay, now a lot of times this won't come out. This will say stuck in there. So if you send this gun to someone to get it Cerakoted, if they're good, they're going to look at your manual also and know what's supposed to come out of the gun and what's supposed to go back in it. Or they're very meticulous and when taking it apart, they need to know this is going to come out. A lot of times these don't come out. Then what happens? You get the gun Cerakote, it falls out at some point. Then they put it back together and then you have a failure to extract. Okay. This spring goes here. It gets super collapsed to build up strength pressure to put on the extractor so nice and flat gives us a lot of rigidity i've seen shops cerakote a gun and remake this machine one and have a rounded edge that rounded edge doesn't put the right amount of pressure on here it allows the extractor to go too easily failure to eject very important if you lose this Make it to look just like this one. Okay. It's in your manual. Or see if you can get a new one. All right. What else came out? I just noticed this. Maybe some of you did too, but I'll mention it now. This was the firing pin bounce spring. That spring goes on the end of the firing pin. So when we put it back together, we'll make sure that goes on there. Firing pin bounce spring. All right. Now for the fun part, we're going to take a part. So when the gun, this is like the drop safety. If the trigger's not pressed, this is going to be in the way, keeping the striker from going off. When it's moved to the side over there, now the striker can be released and get past this channel and, you know, ignite the round. So if the trigger is not pressed, this is going to be in this way. Once the trigger is pressed, it's not only letting the sear go, it's moving this to the side. Okay? We're going to take that apart. All I'm going to do is take that half millimeter Allen key and I'm going to put it underneath and pry it straight out. Show you what it looks like. And this was a real pain in the butt to put back together in the Strike 1 because the design of this little spring in here was a little bit different, but this one's... a uh, big improvement. There are a lot of improvements on this particular gun over the strike one. And then there's a lot of improvements with the Type R upgrade over stock gun, as you can imagine, of course. All right, so let's take all these pieces apart here. You have this piece and you have this piece. And they just intersect together like that. It'll look just like this, like a little puzzle. Then you take the spring. I want to get this good so you guys can see very, very well. And now with this part of the first spring, see the end of it facing this way? And the long side, so there's a short side and there's a long side. The long side running parallel against here, that's how you put it together. And then you turn it till that end hooks on there. There you go. And now putting it back together, you just push this down. Let's see. So this is totally broken down. Now this is how you'd Cerakote it. I mean, if you had the sights off, obviously. This is how you'd Cerakote it. This is how you'd, you know, deep clean it. Whatever you wanted to do with it. Or just practice it's good to know how your gun operates. Big believer in that. All right, I'm gonna put this back in here. OK, 
Okay, and then you're going to want to make sure it's flush right there. If it's not flush, that spring is caught up on something, but I think the new design of that spring allows it to slide past all the grooves and not get caught, unlike the old, the old one and the strike one. So there's another good use for that. Wait, is that what I normally use? Um, what do we want to put in next? What are we going to put in next? I'm going to put the extractor assembly back in, okay? Let's do that first. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the extractor right where it goes. And that feels about right. I'm just going to set right there. I'm going to put my finger right there. Then the next thing that's going to go in was that thing that I said, right, that gets lost. Here's the plunger. Whatever you call it. I call a lot of these things a plunger because I just do spring. And then this big tube. Now that I have it like this, I'm going to go ahead and take a chance. See if we win. I'm going to put this in that hole. That's my 2.5 Allen key. I'm going to line it up on this side. You can see, see, the, see the groove up there, the notch. Line up that knob with that notch. Push it straight down. Yeah, it takes a lot of torque. It's about 30 pounds of pressure. And then I set it back in that hole right there, in that ledge. So it's sunken in there. Okay. Extractor should be super stiff. Super stiff. You're not going to move that. Unless you're the Hulk. Then moving along that right there guess not does this stand up if it's just on a flat surface no it's that RMSC is making it want to go forward and a few other things so we're gonna put in the firing pin bounce spring now firing pin bounce spring drop it in this first hole right there There we go. That's in. Now you're going to want to put these two pieces in together at the same time. You cannot drop this in first and then just drop this in. Doesn't work like that. They have to go in together like a couple. And they're going to go in just like that. I'm going to have them set up like that or in this range right here. But if it's down below here, it'll get caught here. So you want it to be in this range right here. So I got that seated. I got this seated. And then they'll both drop together when everything is. Do I have it lined up correctly? I don't know. It's a little tricky. Usually they're going easier, but I'll have to edit this out and make it look easier. It's scaring everyone. Take this thing apart. Well, it's just because I have this firing pin crooked a little bit. There we go. There we go. Now they fell down together, and that little latch on the uh, trigger spring, that funnel, I mean that tube with the holes in it, is on top of the back of the striker firing pin okay and what goes in next striker spring what goes in next that piece what goes next this piece so i'm going to put this in a little ways then i'm going to go ahead and just push this down Okay, I'm gonna hold that just like that and pick up the back plate that I just dropped. And you can use a punch or whatever. I use my thumbnail in this instance. Okay, press it down, 
back plate over, one final step, get that Allen key, we're going to put it back in here, and we're going to turn it clockwise. There we go. That is looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and just continue assembling this. Barrel goes in. Then the locking block goes in. Curve side, see the top? Curve side to the right. Then your guide rod and spring. It's going to go back in. Just like that. Voila. All right. Let's put this back together now. Trigger, trigger. Set that back in there like that. Now I'm going to set it just like this with the this piece all the way back. I'm going to take my little trigger plunger and spring, put them right in that hole. They go into this hole right here. Now you're going to want to take your thumb. So there's a, geez, I should probably show you this. This will be helpful. I'm going to show it to you. See that hole right there? That big hole is what this one's going to go through. I'm going to do that one first. And here is how it is done. Lift the trigger up with your finger. You're going to take your thumb and you're going to press that down and compress that trigger spring and this trigger spur on top of the hammer. And when you do it, you're going to be able to see through this hole. When you see through the hole very clearly, like I have it misaligned right now, when I have it like that, there's a lot of pressure on there. Once I have it like that, the end of this is a little bit um, rounded. So it should find, and I don't want to put it all the way in, just enough so it's in this part. I have it going through the middle of that hole I showed you, but it's not coming out of the other side. Why? Because you have that trigger spring. See the tip of it? That trigger spring. If you push it all the way through, it's going to be in the front. We want that trigger spring behind both pins that we're about to put in. Well, how do we do it? I'm glad you asked. You need a really cool tool. Looks like that. Apparently, last time I checked, you could write with these things. It's in the hole. Push it to the right. Oops, lost it. It's in the hole. Push it to the right. Push the pin all the way back in. Now the pin, pin is behind that bar. That, the spring is behind that bar. Now you take your other <coughs> pin, the one with just a solid bar. Okay, it's the last one left with the solid bar. Now I'm going to put it in this one. It's not going to go through because it's hitting that trigger plunger. I'm going to press forward on the trigger. I'm going to press the trigger. Watch what happens. It's going to move forward. All right, I'm going to leave that one there now. And I'm going to grab it again. Push forward. Hey, if you have your own technique, something that's better, please comment, make a video. I mean, tell me if I'm doing something hard way because I don't like to do stuff the hard way but I've done this a couple hundred times in the last month and a half so I feel like I'm pretty decent at it but of course if you have your own way share it share it with the public let us know let us save time save parts okay here's what's going to happen now here's the sear spring and that deal going back in the hole there we go I'm going to get the sear ready now. And I'm going to set it in the hole right there off to the side. That's as far as it's going to go in because obviously it has pieces to it. So what I'm going to do now that I have it set up, 
Let's take that handy punch we talk, we've been using throughout the whole deal. Once you commit to pushing this in, you better just be set up and just see it all the way through. Once you push it in, don't let it go, because if you change your mind or this thing falls out and you pull this back out, whew, it's gonna fly out. <laughs> Let's make sure I don't do it. All right, so I'm committed. Pushed it all the way down. Now I got the top of the sear. I pushed it, I pushed the top of the sear down. It went down a little bit further, but it's in front of that thing now. Here we go. There we go, under pressure. Looking good. I'm gonna put my connector back up in here or disconnector, whatever it's called. Maybe I got that totally wrong. Correct me in the comments. Like I said, I'm not a gunsmith. I just know how to take this gun apart. All right, so now you have your tensioner for that disconnector. Looks like that. Put that, this end goes into that hole. Into the hole gonna look like that then I'm just gonna press that down and it's gonna the end of that's gonna slide up into a notch in here there you go voila next all easy stuff now ladies and gentlemen but before I do okay remember this don't put this in yet these usually will fall out on their own we'll see if this one does yeah see this one just falls out so don't put that one in yet the sear Whatever, stay. Sear be good deal. Let's do this one first. This one's a little bit trickier. When you put this takedown tension spring in here, you're gonna put it in like that. Then you're gonna hold it with your thumbnail really good. Then you're gonna grab the top of it. Grab the top and pull it up and set it. That used to take me 10 minutes to do, seriously. And a few curse words later. Now you got the technique. Free, baby. Or as they say, there's no such thing as a free lunch. It's your time you've invested. You spent your time, your valuable time. Now I'm gonna put that back in. Now I can go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and put that back in the sear deal. I'm going to go ahead and put that over it. Hold it. It's not going to fall out now. Then I'm going to set myself up for success. Drop that right there. Then I'm going to put my slide lock slide release right here. Holding it down right here with my thumb. I'm going to press up this hand there we go now it's in place I'm gonna go put my hands around my camera and drop it all like so <laughs> what am I doing wrong they just fall into place like that everything's feeling and looking good I got three pieces left don't shove this straight back in. You can see the tension bar spring in there. You don't want to damage it by going straight in. I don't think, you don't need to put unnecessary wear on it. Go in at this angle, get underneath it, then straighten the bar out and just push it in a little bit. Much easier. Here we go. I'm not going to put the pins in. I'm going to put this together and do a function check first. Otherwise, I have to take the pins all the way back out. Okay. Did you feel that? Sometimes, if you're putting the gun back together and you hit that, don't worry. You just need to... This thing wiggles just a, just a hair. And so does this wiggle just a hair. This slide. Push down on your thumb, and then it'll meet that channel right there. Okay. Pull back just a little bit, and back in. When I mean a little bit, three-eighths of an inch or so. You just pull it back a little bit. You don't have to look at the gun and look for the hole. Just pull it back that much, push the takedown pin in, and it's, it's always going to be fine. I've, I've seldom ever, L, ever, one out of, two out of hundreds of times. So we'll do a function check now. Okay, we're good to go. Piece of tape back. 
comment, please. This was useful or what next video you want to see or, or learn about this gun. Okay. I've been wanting to do it for a long time, but we've been actually very busy sending guns out, building up these upgrades, getting new products to the market. And as a matter of fact, this is my first and my only Type B that I've had. After we got all the pre-orders out, I decided, well, a customer decided he didn't want this one because it was supposed to be a what was it? Non-stippled gun. I said, nope, build me another one. I'm like, yeah, sorry. Cool, well, I'll keep that one for myself. So I finally have a gun. This is one's going to be going to the range quite a bit. Testing out that guide rod and spring. Testing out some other new cool stuff we have coming. And we will do a review on the shield site next time. We'll do a review on, oh, we got a lot of stuff coming up. All right, looking good, that's it. Comment or email if you have questions, sales at rain six. Hope you guys liked the video. Hopefully it wasn't too long, but we wanna be thorough and wanna show you how we do things, you know, I think efficiently with it and safely, but most of all point out, you know, what, what can happen, you know, in a bad situation or what to look out for when you're taking it apart, putting it back together. Kind of helpful, we kind of mapped out the pitfalls for you guys here. All right, appreciate you guys. Take care. God bless.